Well, it could have been worse. Crossy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to another episode of Packcast, a podcast where you don't have to pack time, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. Yeah, I was kind of expecting a massacre, so this is actually a little bit better. Grassy, and today we're going to be breaking down the Green Bay Packers loss to the Buffalo Bills on Sunday Night Football, a game where I think a lot of Packers fans did not have a lot of high hopes or expectations heading into this game. A lot of fans thinking that we were going to get blown out. And while the Bills definitely put on a show in that first half and they scored 17 in the second quarter, the Packers really kind of just held their ground in the second half, only allowing three points, putting up some points in the second half with their offense, which is a little bit of a shocker. And I think that while there are things to be disappointed about, the Packers kind of gave me some hope. And they kind of just laid some foundational building blocks that maybe, emphasis on the maybe, this team could learn from and get better moving forward. Because I think what the team put on the field today could translate into winning football games. It's just going to be a matter of are they going to implement their game plan that they use tonight in future games? And is it too late for them potentially to make a run with them losing four straight and their standings in the division slash conference. So let's get into this. Let's talk about Aaron Rodgers. Went 19 for 30, 203 yards, two touchdowns, an interception, was sacked two times. Did have a lot of pressures on the night. Elton Jenkins not playing this evening, but David Bakhtiari was there. But you saw, especially on the interior, that Aaron Rodgers uh, didn't have a ton of time there. Here's the big story of the day. Aaron Jones getting 20 carries for 143 yards, average 7.2 yards per carry. And this is something that Packers fans have been clamoring for all season. Every single time Aaron Jones gets the ball, it's usually a good thing. And you cannot feed him too much. Aaron Jones, in my opinion, is the best player on that offense, and I think there's a really good argument that he's the best player on the Green Bay Packers right now. And the more that he can get the ball in his hands, the better the Packers are going to do. And you saw this play after play this evening. Meanwhile, A.J. Dillon, 10 for 54, averaging 5.4 yards per carry. Got a little banged up, but thankfully came back in the game. And the Packers really committed to the run tonight. And between Jones, Dillons, and a rush by Rodgers, they had over 200 rushing yards tonight, which again is a blueprint on how to win football games. Hell, the Packers at one point dominated time of possession. They finished the game with 33 minutes and 48 seconds compared to the 26 minutes and 12 seconds of the Buffalo Bills. They kept Josh Allen off the field. The defense, as I talked about before, locked them down in the second half, forced two turnovers, And this is how the Packers could win football games. And it's a little frustrating because if the Packers played this kind of football against their previous three opponents, I think that they could have won at least two out of those three games. But again, we can't go back in the past and change that. But going forward, maybe the Packers say, hey, we just went up against one of the best teams, if not the best team in football, and we were able to hold our own a little bit. Yes, there was a bad call on Robert Tunyon that resulted in a loss of a touchdown. Yes, we did get blown out in the first half. But again, the Packers have a blueprint for success. It's just a matter of if they're going to follow it in the future. Romeo Dobbs, 4 for 62, had an amazing touchdown grab as well. Samore Toure got a grab for 37 yards, his second NFL catch, and his first touchdown. Super happy for him. Christian Watson, who was activated for this game, unfortunately did not spend a lot of time in this game, got injured early on, had a concussion, and did not return. Speaking of injuries, Devondre Campbell also suffered an injury, and Quay Walker got himself ejected early on in this game for pushing a coach on the Bills' sideline, which was just completely unnecessary. They interviewed him after the game. He expressed remorse for the incident, but a bad play from a rookie player, and it really left us lacking in the middle of the field. Continuing to talk about that defense, Darnell Savage continued a struggling season tonight in which I just don't know what you're going to do at this point. The thing is, we already guaranteed his fifth-year option, so we are going to be paying him a lot of money. So that's something to be worked out in the future. I mentioned the defense holding the Bills to three points, allowed 17 points in the second quarter, and I thought, oh man, is this going to be a blowout? But again, the defense played pretty darn well. Josh 
down 13 for 25, 218 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. They also got two sacks on him. Josh Allen was able to get six carries for 49 yards. Singletary got 67 yards on 14 carries. Cook, five for 55 and one reception for 41 yards. So yes, the Bills were able to rush all over the Packers, but the Packers at least made it a little bit of an interesting game at times. Diggs was their leading receiver with six receptions, 108 yards, and a touchdown. Gabe Davis limited to just two catches and 35 yards. And this Bills offense, which we know is incredibly explosive, the Packers were able to contain in the second half. And talking about some of the optimistic things, the Packers finally showed some damn fight. They got punched in the mouth in that second quarter. Things were not going well for them. And they continued to fight in the second half. And this is just something you haven't seen from Matt LaFleur's Green Bay Packers, and especially this season. Now, I will say, looking at the negatives, the Packers had eight penalties. They had a ton last week as well. The discipline is not good. The holding calls are setting them back. You have great returns that are happening on kickoffs, and those are being negated. So that's a big problem. In addition, the Packers have now dropped four straight games. They're sitting at three and five. Meanwhile, the Vikings are sitting at six and one. They're sitting pretty, and they could lock up the division by Thanksgiving. But as I said in last week's video, that kind of just needs to not even be the focus because the Packers just need to turn it around. And the one bit of hope I have is that they're in a conference that is not good. The NFC West is not great. The NFC South is not good at all. They don't even have a single team with a winning record. The NFC East, they're playing pretty darn well. So it's going to be a battle for the Packers to potentially make the playoffs. But again, they have the blueprint to do so. They're playing the Lions next week, and the Lions played the Dolphins really, really tough today. So I don't think there's any easy games coming up for the Green Bay Packers right now because they seem to be their own worst enemy. They played a much better team in the Buffalo Bills tonight. And while, of course, there are no moral victories in the NFL and a loss still stings and is still going to hurt them going forward, there are at least some things that you can hold on to as a Packers fan and go, maybe they can get better. Because before this, the previous three weeks, it was frustration. It was being upset with this team. And tonight, I didn't really feel too frustrated. I didn't feel too upset. They got outplayed by a better football team. But for the most part, they held their own. Before we head out of here, I want to do a big shout and thank you to some brand new patron and YouTube members. First, on the Patreon side of things, we have Luke Williams. And on the YouTube side of things, joining the Grossi Posse Plus, we have Melissa Eggleston. We have Code Blue 455 We have Justin Connery. We have Ryan Fish. We have Justin Ziegler. We have Kyle Close. We have Allison Tuckwab. We have Ultimate 13. And we have Christine Marina Chio. A big shout out and thank you to you all. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. How you feeling after this loss to the Buffalo Bills on Sunday night? Let me know what you think. You can always send me at TomGrossyComedy.com or at TomGrossyComedy. All social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course, YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrossyComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grossy. And as always, Go Pack Go.